Hi everyone and welcome along to This Racing Life, the latest instalment here in Midlam, a quite glorious day and of course this being the home to Mark Johnson. We learn a little bit more about a few of the team behind Britain's winning most trainer. Later in the show we head across to Musley Bank, across Yorkshire and pay a visit to Richard Fahey. Here's what's coming up. It does take a lot of uh, preparing and I'll say it's, uh, as we get bigger it gets harder to prepare. Um, but hopefully in the hall it works very well. And you want people underneath you to then realise that you've been here for so long, they think actually this is a good job here. It, ju it just goes to show that if you have a goal and you want to keep striving for winners, you know, you can start from anything and train over 4,000 winners. It's just, it's just it's an amazing achievement. He's always been very ambitious in, in the, everything that he does, so he's probably got a bit more ambitious every year and wants better things every year, you know. The horses look really well and that stems from the lads who do the, um, do all the hard work at home and for the people who take them racing and get them look, looking good on the day. I think technique is a big thing with horses rather than strength is massive but technique is important too um, in terms of we'd say settling or holding a horse rather than being a Still just a traction in front here, running inside the final quarter mile. It's a traction, but will she last it out? She kicks a length or so clear. Silker's gift on the far side. Then Hathra running on down the centre. Sun drop from Red Bloom. Carry on Katie and Natalia. And traction still holding sway. A length and a half clear of Hathra. A traction from Hathra. Sun drop a late run on the near side. A traction wins the guinea. They're racing down towards the final furlong. Kinran is running on on the inside as well. Sharjah Bridge Poet Society with that record inside, of course. Firmament being produced on the near side, though, joining in Poet Society just in front as they race inside the final 50 yards. Firmament and Kinran over on the far side. The record for Mark Johnston, the winning most trainer in Britain, as Poet Society wins the Clipper Logistics. Jock Bennett, assistant to Mark Johnson, has been an invaluable member of the team since 1997. I started in um, 1972 as a 15 year old, as an apprentice. I think I was still um, one of the last indentured apprentice. I very soon fell in love with the game and it's been my life every day since. You know, in them days, you'd, you'd look in the sporting papers for jobs and it would say lads um, needed under nine stone seven, apply. Whereas Mark's advert had his logo on um, with a proper uh, job advert saying good salary, different conditions, and it attracted me to it and uh, applied and thankfully got the job. Do you remember what the interview was like? Yeah, it was quite thorough. Uh, he took me out in the yard, asked me a few things about horses' legs, and I told him obviously my experience and what have you, but um, on the whole it was a very good interview. Um, and hopefully I must have interviewed quite well. And how organically has, has your role developed in the, the 22 years since then? Um, I started off, I applied in them days, we were still called head lads, um, for the second head lads job. Um, and not longer after that, one of the main head lads left and we changed the, the head lad system to yard managers. Um, and um, we went from three uh, head lads to four yard managers and we split the yard up into four four groups and uh, I became one of the, the yard managers. And is it that kind of forward thinking and organisation then that has what you've shown me today just having a look at the colour coded work board which is it's a work of art as much as anything else just to watch how to me it would look like in layman's terms extremely difficult to read but to you and to everybody here it is what makes this place tick. Yeah yeah um, 
you know, I've just done two inductions this morning with two new staff and I tell them when they look at it, you know, don't be faced by this because in a week's time it will be second nature to you. It's, um, it's quite easy to follow. Um, it does take a lot of uh, preparing and I'll say it's, uh, as we get bigger, it gets harder to prepare. Um, but hopefully in the whole it works very well. Do you love what you do still? Oh yes, without a doubt. Um, you know, how can you do 47 years and not love it? Um, you know, it's, um, it's been great. I've been able to meet a lot of great people. Like I say, I left school at 15. I had no qualifications whatsoever. As I always say, the only one was common sense and hopefully that's got me to here. I've seen things, different things happen each year. Um, Mark extending. Every year um, he's added something new to the, to the, the yards down in the main village to up here buying the farm and see what the farm's turned into and every year somewhere gets some you know some something else gets built you know we just put the new water walker in and swimming pool up here just over two years ago uh, treadmill different things like I say every year something happens the place gets bigger and it goes too fast for me at times I think right since ever Mark started training he he's he, he hasn't trained uh, changed his training methods a lot at all. He maybe tweaked them here and there. We have simple feed, feeding regime, training exercise. I think the beauty of Mark and one of the reasons I've said it to everybody um, why, why we have so many winners is because we run them. Um, you know, I've seen trainers and I know of trainers who, you know, train horses differently, work them twice a week. But when we get horses fit here, we don't gallop them again. Um, they, they run and they do their galloping on the track and get money for it. So, you know, and that keeps the owners happy, the lads, staff happy. Um, but I just see it as a very good common sense way of training. When I was a yard manager, I looked after a lot of uh, um, good horses, mainly attraction. She was in my yard when she did the Guineas double and the coronation. That was a fantastic journey, seeing her. You know, I think she went eight times unbeaten. Um, but that journey was fantastic. But I'd have to say probably when I was riding still, uh, my favourite horse was uh, Royal Rebel, who won two Ascot Gold Cups, who was a proper character. Very lazy at home, very tough on the track. Where do you see this going over the next few years? Well, I think you know, the next era will be Charlie, I would think. Um, I'm sure um, it's no secret that Mark will wind down in some sort of way, but I think he'll always be a part of it. But I'm sure Charlie's looking forward to taking over the reins and trying to beat his dad's record, which, you know, I think he still thinks he has a chance, and who knows, he's a very good young man at what he's doing at the moment, that's for sure. Rona Bagnall is one of the travelling managers within the team, and her role has taken her globally over the last decade. I have been here 11 years in August. I ride out and then I go travelling with the horses, um, and I go wherever I get put, so... What I think we often forget, and perhaps take for granted is the horses they turn up they run well they win invariably presumably there are an awful lot of steps in the preparation just to get a horse to the races yeah so you've got to make sure that they're plated straight away um, get them ready for the horse box um, put their bandages on tape their feet up brush them over make sure they look smart before they go to the races load them up make sure the driver's good uh, and get them get them there as safely as you can and it's the other people on the, the road that you're more wary about. But yeah, no, our drivers are good, so yeah. Over the years, I've, I've managed to go to Canada um, with Jukebox Jury in Eastern Area. I've done Dubai, Turkey, um, and I've been to France and Germany, Ireland uh, for the Goths Million. That was amazing, that was an amazing day. And my most recent, I got to saddle two winners for the All Weather Championship. That was really, really good day, yeah. We always see the Mark Johnson horses, they, they're turned out impeccably well at the race course. A, cre a credit to you, but also, dare I say, the staff are always looking very, oh, very smart at the yeah. races. Is that something that's always drummed in? Yes, yeah. Uh, they have to make them, like, you have to drum it in that they have to look smart. And uh, it's good for the business. How special a place is it to work for? With Mark at the very top, but obviously Charlie, Deirdre, the likes of Jock and yourself that have been here a long, long time, it's a testament to the place but also the people that there's such longevity yeah it's here. it's amazing to be here uh, being part of the team you pe you feel part of the family as well um and uh, and you want people underneath you to then realize that you've been here for so long they think actually this is a good job here 
In terms of what Mark achieved last year, back in August, presumably in the time that you've been here, 10 years at that point, if someone had said to you in 10 years' time he will be the record-breaking trainer, would that have even surprised you back then, knowing what he's no. like? No, because we, when I first started here, we started getting 150 winners, 200 winners, and you just knew that it was, it was coming. When you've got the, head, the good head lads that we've got, and then you've got your, their assistants that are very, very good as well. And they, they, it really does work out very, very well. What do you love most about this job? I think the people. I love the people here. Um, the horses, of course, I love the horses. And getting to go all around the world with them um, is just amazing. Like, there's no other job and getting to be in the sunshine like today is instead of being stuck in a, inside. Um, yeah, of course, just just love it, yeah. In the, in the decade or so, which horse have you had the best relationship with? Which one means the most to you? Eastern Aria. She was my, she was my number one girl, yeah. Um, and I, I've been everywhere with her, so yeah, it was really, really special. And she won a group two at Doncaster, um, and then she went for the Melbourne Cup, but didn't get in by one. And uh, then she went, Godolphin took her after that. So I was a bit gutted when she went, but yeah, she was, I've got pictures of her all over my house. So yeah, she's my number one. <laughs> Apprentice jockey Ollie Stammers is now approaching two years within the setup and reflects on how the association first came about. The summer of 2017, um, I got the opportunity through um, the person that I work for in Essex, from where I'm from, to come up here for two months in the summer just for some work experience. And within three weeks, I was I loved it here, and I was given the opportunity to stay and be riders and apprentice jockey. Um, I'd worked for tra ridden out for trainers in Newmarket, but this was just on a different level. The main thing that drew me to um, here is the fact that there's so many horses and it just improves your riding ability so much. Um, he just gave me so, so many opportunities in riding work and it just helped me so much. Is it quite a family set up here? Yes, um, Deirdre's fantastic, she's such a lovely lady, she rides out with us, and she's very approachable, Charlie is so approachable, Every, you know, everyone's so approachable and uh, it makes life so much easier. It, ju it just goes to show that if you have a goal and you want to keep striving for winners, you know, you can start from anything and train over 4,000 winners, it's just, it's just an, it's an amazing achievement. You've been riding winners for Mark, um, which of them have, have satisfied you the most, which have you enjoyed the most? Uh, everyone, um, you know, they're all special in, in their own way. Um, obviously, my first ride was a winner, which was fantastic on Ravenhoe, and I think that was that was brilliant. Um, but you know, riding horses like Pert Society and Massam Star and good handicaps, it just they give you opportunities. As long, as long as you work hard, you know, and keep your head down, the chances are there. And how much do you feel you've developed, not only as a as a rider, as the job that you do, but as a person in the time that you've been here? I've developed it as a person so much more. Um, I've grown up a hell of a lot. I live a, a long way from home, so it it just grows you up and it, it hardens you up. Um, I feel like I've I've toughened up as well. You know, sometimes you might get a, a telling off, or you know, but you just have to get on with it, brush it off. It goes, take what's needed out out of it and learn from it, and it'll improve you. So you wanted to come here for a couple of months initially. Two years on, you're still here. It's a beautiful day. Why would why would anyone want to leave? Um, <laughs> Where do you see the next few years for yourself? Um, hopefully to just keep improving my riding, keep riding winners, um, and just, just become the best jockey I can be. As one of the yard managers, Hayley Kelly has a huge role to play each day and reflects on over two decades within the setup. I started here in 1994, so this November it'll be 25 years. Well, I, went, I came down for three weeks of work experience and then I went to the British Racing School and then came back back here for full time and I've been here ever since. When you first, so 25 years ago when you met Mark, was, was he as he is now back then? Yeah, he probably is the way, but obviously I know him a lot better now than I did when I was 17 when I first started here, but he's always been very ambitious in, in the, everything that he does, so he's probably got a bit more ambitious every year and wants better things every year, you know. How has your, your role, your roles within the setup developed over the last, well, last quarter of a century? 
Uh, well, the first, within the first year of me being here when I was 17, I would done the second travelling. So I was a travel manager for 17 years until this will be my eighth year as yard manager. So I'd been around the world a couple of times and decided that it's long hours and a long time away from home. So I changed and there was a yard manager position available. So I took that. I mean, obviously I, I was lucky because I was so young when I came to Marks and I did get a lot, a lot of opportunities and I traveled the world and met some great people, seen some great places. But Mark is all about wanting to teach people and bring people on in life and to go on and do better things. So there's a lot of opportunities, yeah. How much different was it back in the early days to what it is now? Oh, we probably had half the horses that we did back then. Obviously, and how, obviously every, everything's grown, the horses, the staff, the place. We didn't have part farm, we just had the Kingsley House and Warwick House down in the village. But everything's grown as the years have gone on, so. I've got a barn of 58 horses and 16 staff, so I probably have the largest barn of horses and staff to manage up at Park Farm. So obviously I manage 16 staff, but within that I've got my assistant. I have Rona, who's travelling manager, and there's kids, Ollie, he's an apprentice. I actually have all three apprentices in my yard, so it's just a case of trying to teach them as they go along and mentor them to be able to go on and do different things, you know. I think for when I first started, it's different type of people that's coming into racing now. Because we all came in, there's a few of us here that have been here 20 plus years. We came off the back of riding ponies at Pony Club and a lot of them now, some of them come from never sitting on a racehorse before in their life before they go to the racing school. So I think it is a different type of person that's coming in. Mm. But if they work hard and get on with their job, you get to go places, you know. If they don't have the attitude like that, then they're not going to get on. But a lot of, most of the people here, we do like to train them up and get them doing things that they didn't think they'd get a chance to do. What's the best part of this job for you? Um, at the moment, obviously, we like to have winners. So it's good to be getting winners every day. Now that the sun's out, I have a barn of fillies, so they like the sunshine better than the winter climate. But um, no, it's... It's having winners every day and teaching your staff the way forward and pushing them on to do better things, you know. Another member of staff with over 20 years service is Mark Billingham, who's been a part of some special days during that time. I was very professional. It stems right from the top, from uh, uh, Mark and Deidre and Charlie, and it um, flows all the way down, down the chain, and everything is so well organised. What really characterises Mark? I think he just wants the job done right. Um, you know, everything has to be done perfect, and uh, we all, you know, and we all strive to to do the best we can. Have you had some very very special days out on the road? I have. Um, some of my big days have been abroad. Um, I've travelled uh, Group One winners um, down to Italy and uh, in Germany. So they, they were really special days. Who's been your favourite your favourite horse or your favourite experience over those years? The good horses, Shamadal and Attraction, will always spring to mind. Um, but more recently, I've been having a lot to do with DXB and I seem to ride him a lot in his work at home. And so I'm really hoping that he's going to run well uh, this year and at uh, Royal Ascot in the Gold Cup. For you, looking at some of the younger people coming through here, does it, do you try and give, it, give off to them the fact that there are so many opportunities when you come and work at a place like this? There is, um, you know, and if they work hard, they can, um, you know, it can be a job for life, really. We associate the Mark Johnson trained horses. They come to the race course looking picturesque, they look in great condition, but also the staff are well, well presented. Is that something that's very much drummed in from the top? Oh yes, I think um, a presentation is a big part. Um, but uh, as for the horses, the horses look really well and that stems from the lads who do, the, um, do all the hard work at home and for the people who take them racing and getting them look, looking good on the day. And what about you, 23 years here, is it still the, very much the plan to stay here, continue and enjoy what you've been doing for, his number of, well, for the years that you have and, and for many, many more? Mm, very much so. Um, if, if I didn't like the job I wouldn't have stopped here this long and uh, I've got no plans to move on. I really enjoy the, enjoy the job here.
But welcome along to Richard Fahey's magnificent Moulton Base, a yard which year upon year sends out countless winners. And in 2019, already a number of them have been partnered by a man who's making great waves within the apprentice riding ranks. He's only been in the country since December, and we've come to learn a little bit more about Sean Davis. My cousin worked in a, worked in a small point-to-point -point yard, so um, that's, that's the only sort of uh, attachment to racing I had. And, um, I wasn't exactly the best behaved in school and um, didn't really, wasn't fond on attending so I started to go up there and work with him rather than going to school um, and fell in love with horses, fell in love with riding horses and, and um, the family that owned the yard, the Mahan family, Sean Mahan is the name of the man who sort of looked after us, taught us to ride and uh, he seen a bit of potential in me and recommended that, I, that I'd go to the racing academy in Kildare. So to go there I had to get my junior cert uh, level in school. So I finished that and went to race and got in there and that's how I got into them. When I went to race I couldn't, I could ride a bit, I knew the basics but I couldn't ride properly and I was very weak. Um, Barry Walsh and Niall Byrne and all the team in race, they, they, I think I learned an awful lot in race um, and I was a very light lad so I, yeah I had to strengthen up an awful lot. Now, I'm not a great eater so that wasn't a, wasn't a great help but I think technique is a big thing with horses rather than Strength is massive, but technique is important too, um, in terms of, we'll say, settling or holding a horse, rather than being uh, physically strong. And how, how have you sort of viewed your, the development of your technique? Have you taken inspiration from others? Uh, Johnny Murta was definitely a massive inspiration to me. Yeah. Um, I like him as a, as a person, as a writer, his, his character. And um, I I'd, I'd just, I don't know, I, I copy my, my uh, style off other riders, but technique, I think you just learn with, from making mistakes. When you get, when you get ran away, when you get plenty of falls, you don't, you don't be long before you start trying to learn how to uh, stop it from happening and, and uh, obviously improve your riding. It's fair to say that before you came here, you've, you've had huge race success, you've had Irish Champions Weekend success, that's the, as big as it gets obviously over on the flat in Ireland, and obviously the Galway Festival as well, you won a big race there. How sort of seminal have those days been in your career? I think the, the Irish Champions Weekend winner is obviously bigger than the Galway winner, but I was I was 17 at the time, so you you don't I don't think you appreciate it much. Like to ride a winner now at the stage I'm at, a big winner like that, it mean mean an awful lot to me. But at the time, I know you think it's easy, you think it, that it, it's it's up normal. So maybe I didn't appreciate it as much, but definitely the winner at the Curragh was it was a, a very big, very big deal. I was still claiming in Ireland we claimed 10 until you've ridden three winners, so I was still claiming 10, and I took. Ten pounds off, mm -hmm. eight stone four, with a big saddle, and um, got a great joy, got a great kick out of that. And it was for Donald Kinsella, who's supported me an awful lot in Ireland and and, and gave me plenty of winners even even just before I came to England. So uh, that was probably my biggest thrill. But Galway is obviously the place. I don't know what it is about Galway. Every jockey in Ireland wants to ride winners there. Mm -hmm. There's a great atmosphere at Galway, and that I got a great thrill out of riding the winner at Galway too. So when did the phone ring to say that there's an opportunity to come here, to come to England? To get right at the level I want, I want to be eventually riding at. Yeah. I didn't see it happening in Ireland. And that's when I spoke to uh, my agent, Kevin O'Ryan, and, and my boss, Ger Lyons, who recommended Richard. So it was more m me looking to come here than them looking for me, I think. And how easy was the, the initial sort of adaptation? Because you came, what, in midwinter? I came in December. I um, came 1st of December and started on Monday morning. And I, I don't know, after a week I felt at home. Did you? It was yeah. quite easy, easy to acclimatise. Easy, yeah, yeah. Very easy place to work. Everyone's very welcoming. It's a great team. Everyone gets on great. So it wasn't long before I settled in. You've ridden at, at plenty of. You've ridden at Newmarket. You've ridden at Newbury. You've ridden at Ascot. You've, has it been a bit of an exploration for you to learn these new tracks as well? You have to ride the tracks a couple of times before you really get get comfortable with them and get um, being able to ride a, a good race around there. So yeah, riding at all the different tracks. Your first time, first couple of times are are a little bit tricky, um, but thankfully I'm getting plenty of rides, so I'm having plenty of chances to, uh, to learn the tracks. Which day so far in the UK has given you the biggest thrill? I think riding my first winner um, for, for the boss, that, that gave me a great thrill, because um, I'd, I'd had a couple of rides that were placed, fancied rides that were placed, and um, starting to think, oh, when's, when's, when's the winner gonna pop up, and then it, it, uh, it popped up, and it was, it was nice, I got a great thrill out of that, and for Midland Park Racing, who, Sort of an owner, you know, a lot of runners yeah. and every jockey enjoys riding first, so I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed that, my first one. 
The Apprentice title, did you, did you come here back in, in midwinter thinking, that's the dream, that's what I want this year? I try, in Ireland um, it was a name, something I, I'd, I'd have liked to have done. And obviously it's very difficult in Ireland, very competitive. Mm. And coming here it was more so of to, to have a career and, um, okay. and to, to ha have a successful career hopefully. But then obviously when you join a stable like Richards and, and you're getting the, uh, the support and riding, riding the, the types of horses that I'm riding with chances and everything, it, it, comes, it comes into your mind and then it became something that I did want to do. Um, I suppose you, you, you don't want to try and do something that you, you, you think you might not achieve, we'll say. Or you've no chance of achieving, I think I have a big chance, so yeah, it's definitely something, something I want to do. With the, su with the support I'm getting, um, I think I've, I have a good chance. I was going to say, I think I've noticed that I think already in the UK you've ridden for almost 30 different trainers. The opportunities are there for you, aren't they? Definitely, and with an agent, Niall Hannity, who books my rides, is a brilliant agent. Um, Kevin O'Reilly was my agent in Ireland, recommended Niall and, and uh, got me with Niall, so yeah. brilliant agent and obviously riding, he's, he's, he's had me riding for... Robert Cowell and Kevin Ryan and you know, good, good trainers, uh, north and south, so yeah, it's brilliant. Well unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this week on This Racing Life. We'd like to thank everyone here at Mark Johnson's for accommodating us and indeed making this week's show possible. So too, over at Musley Bank, the whole team at Richard Fahey. We'd also like to thank you at home for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.